Growing up in today's highly competitive environment can be cutthroat for the child, and the pressures to perform can prove insurmountable and counterproductive, which raises the question, what can the most influential adults in their lives do to empower them to bounce back to success? Well, it's a complex topic, and it deserves to be approached from a 360-degree perspective. And fortunately, we're joined by a panel of subject matter experts in studio. Please allow me to introduce them. The Chief Marketing Officer and Senior Executive Vice President of Sales with HDFC Life, Pankaj Gupta. The Managing Trustee of the Podar Foundation, Dr. Prakriti Podar. The Director and Principal of Podar International School, Dr. Vandana Lulla. Teacher with GD Somani Memorial School, Sonia Mithani. Also my colleague, anchor with ET Now, Tamanna Inamdar. Now, as a society, we obviously glorify success. But are we falling short when it comes to developing the coping mechanisms in our next generation of adolescents that essentially empower them to face and embrace disappointments? I think it's the home and the school that need to partner together to create a successful child. And I think it's very, very important for us to create that environment to make sure that at the end of the journey of the child, he's able to face the world. I always start all my uh, conversations with parents saying that we are partners in education. Let's partner together. You're not an audience because your goal to create a successful child and our goal to create a successful child is the same. Sonia, I'd love to bring you into the conversation. Of course, as Dr. Lulla mentioned, everyone shares the goal of creating and raising a healthy, balanced child who's socially conscious, who will leave a successful impact on his or her world. But the approaches vary drastically. How does one strike the right balance? It's very important for the school and the parents to come together and share a common ideology. In schools, you know, often it is understood that if a child doesn't do well in exam, then the child is not able to succeed in life, which is not really true. So you can't just put one aspect as the most important one in a child's life. So it's very important to keep giving child ample opportunities in school to balance their learning, growth and development. I think once the child knows how to cope with everything together, eventually the child will definitely, you know, find his way in life. Tamanna, a common trap that many parents fall prey to is living their own aspirations through their child. Yeah. <laughs> right? How does one in such a scenario put the mirror to themselves and course correct? I was uh, very judgmental of people uh, and the way they behave with their children sure. right before I became a parent. Right. Because then you realize you go through that same phase and you're absolutely right, Pooja. Somewhere or the other, we want to foist um, you know, our version of a perfect childhood onto our child. And you learn very quickly that that just doesn't work. They will fight back, they will want to express themselves and they face so much pressure right now um, even compared to when we were growing up because it's not just their uh, in you know immediate environment in their classrooms or their playgrounds they're more exposed to the internet than ever before that's true uh, children right now are not just competing mentally with their peers they're competing with other children they're watching on YouTube videos right. so it's a completely different paradigm Sometimes it's just very tough to keep that balance be between wanting to helicopter and shepherd them through every moment sure. and be willing to take a step back and let them make their own mistakes. I think that's, that's the toughest challenge for any parent and it's a day-to-day -day experiment, sure. I think, for everyone. And, you know, Dr. Podar, parenting is, of course, a very delicate balancing act because you have to provide support, unconditional support, whenever and however required, but then also know when to pull back. That said, you know, what are the do's and don'ts here and how do they ultimately impact a child and them bouncing back from disappointment? Bouncing back is all about your mental resilience. So when we're talking about what do parents do, the tips of what they should do, they should first put mental health in the center. 
Yeah. Mental health is not only the way you are behaving, but it's how you feel. It's your social emo emotional development. And that entire range of social emotional development is that you need to be the person that your child comes to. And this is something that is, is very uh, important because children have become extremely sensitive because they're, they're sensitized to the fact that they are open to a world where it's not just like you said, the family system, but it's on the net. And it's creating a lot of disharmony in children. Uh, so when you're talking about how, how do you actually get the child to bounce back, I think the most important thing is to actually get into their frame of reference. And I'm not saying be their friend only. Parenting has to happen, but there has to be a 50-50 of both. So how can you know, a teacher and a student or a parent and a student you know, essentially form a partnership so that they can jointly look back at setbacks or disappointments, obstacles, failures, you know, even with a good sense of humor or as a positive experience from which to learn and grow. As a parent of two children myself, I believe that children today are going through a lot of complexities in their own lives. Lots of stimulus around, including the internet that we have spoken about. Right. Children need acceptance more than anything else. As we know, each child is different and each child has different talents. Sometimes uh, we as parents have a certain expectation of our children and we live our life through them. Child is in a position of deciding whether to try to come up to the expectations of their parents or try to live their own life the way they have visualized. Right. So it is very, very important for all of us, including the parents, the schools, to keep an open mind of what we expect from our children. Right. If we keep an open mind and let our children be, I believe they will flower much better than if we try and direct them in a certain direction. I think that was very well put and that essentially leads me to my next question and that is to you, Tamanna. You know, our parents sort of have a natural tendency to compare their children to others yeah. rather than recognize their child's unique potential. It's not just uh, the father and the mother. Then you have to tell the grandparents, the aunties and uncles that this is something we have a problem with. Right. Do not say ke, you know, uh, dekho wo kaise karti hai. Right. Do not point out to others because we really don't want that frame of reference. It's it's okay. Now it's the reverse. It's about telling our child about how it's okay if someone else is good at X because you are good at Y. That's a very conscious effort you have to make. Uh, sometimes you have to, uh, you know, uh, control your own tendency to have that comparison. And I found it very useful because then I extended it to my own life, uh, where you are constantly, you know, mentally comparing yourself with your peers and wondering whether you're up that ladder. And I said, hey, let me try this out for myself. And I've actually reverse learned. It actually really helped me to say, I'm going to do my best on my scale. And, and take that, you know, sort of uh, scoreboard out of my head. So uh, that really helps. It's a conscious decision and you have to work at it. Well, switching gears a bit here, Pankaj, you know, uh, one thing families often struggle with is whether to cater to the child's needs of the present or essentially to plan for their future, right? So how does one essentially juggle the two such that neither is jeopardized? It is very important to balance the long term and the short term. And almost all affairs of our lives. And that is the same with the way we plan for our children's future. You want to give them the best possible education in the present. And you also need to be aware that as the inflation is impacting the cost of education, if you have objective of sending your child to a certain college, maybe in India or abroad, then you need to plan for that as well. The beauty about financial planning is that given the way compounding works, the sooner you start planning, the more confident you are that you are going to be successful in meeting the financial objectives. So the thumb rule to use is try to use your judgment in striking the right balance between the short term and the long term. And always remember that the sooner you start, the easier it is going to be. Honing in back on our theme here, there is no one size fits all formula to achieving success. So when students you know, plan towards their endeavors, but things don't go as planned, how do you in your capacity as a teacher essentially sort of empower them, set them back on track and assure them that while things may not have gone as planned, that certainly doesn't equate to failure. 
सो यू नो वन थिंग दैट आई फील इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज टू हैव अ लिसनिंग हेयर यू नो समाइम्स यू डोंट रियली हैव टू टेल चिल्ड्रन वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू डू दे जस्ट नो इट दम सेल्व बट इट्स जस्ट दैट यू हैव टू लिसन टू दैम लेट दैम फर्स्ट स्पिल आउट यू नो द फीलिंग्स ऑफ हर्ट दैट दे हैव विद इन दम सेल्व एंड गिव दैम एन एनवायरमेंट विच हेल्प दैम टू अगेन गेट बैक टू वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू यू नो इफ एज एन इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड एज अ सोसाइटी इफ वी स्टार्ट फोकसिंग ऑन द जर्नी इट हेल्प्स द चाइल्ड अ लॉट मोर टू अचीव if they are goals in life and they have the confidence to you know work for what they want even if they could not succeed the first time or they had a setback i believe it is very important to realize that in life you get many many chances sure important thing is to not get bogged down with one result that you might think is a setback or a failure and stop trying right each child and each one of us has a unique potential and we are capable of achieving something which probably nobody else is capable of achieving how do you realize that and uh, not let uh, somebody's uh, st- stray remark get to you i think that is very very important as we discussed in the earlier part of the conversation parents have expectations relatives have, ex- have expectations sometimes we may have our own expectations that are thwarted in spite of all of that to keep your mental balance to say that life will give me more opportunities all that i'm doing now with this setback is learning how not to fail and when i am going to try the next time i'll be far more successful that mental agility and stamina that we talked about from a mental health perspective that is the ability to bounce back which we all should cultivate and help our children cultivate i i think most of the uh, schools uh, especially when it comes to exams is where the children lose their confidence and start feeling introvert and st- start feeling that i just can't do it and like you rightly said pankaj is that given them another chance because don't be judgmental about just a day when the exam happens so as a school we believe that we should give them another opportunity so we give them another opportunity we give them an another day and we say okay if you've not understood this concept how can we reteach you the same concept and help you to come back and then give another test and see how you can achieve so give them another chance give them an opportunity is what i strongly believe in and i also think that we we must teach them that don't compete with others i think we were talking about it earlier Absolutely. compete with yourself and see if you've not done well it doesn't matter that's not the end of the world there's always another opportunity for you there's always another chance for you where you can build on yourself and come back if you never tried how would you know that you are you are successful be human in your parenting then you will create a human that is also expressive and wants to give back to society i think you know that's really important make sure that you love your children and spend time with the children i think these are two things that whether it's the school or whether it's home it's important to devote that time and the most important uh, word that i want to use is have empathy towards the kids our society values success and sometimes whatever definition of success is being used if anything is not in line with that it is viewed as a failure it's important for you to know that your child is feeling uncomfortable with a certain environment or with a certain setback so that you can give the cushioning that the child requires do you believe that adults talk about uh, their own setbacks whether recent or long ago enough such that the child comes to you know accept their own shortcomings setbacks failures obstacles difficulties and overcome them eventually to sharing help i think this is a great point because uh, first of all if you're authentic you are a mirror to what the child's going to be so if you learn to be the kind of person that's able to to emote to express uh to be cognizant of of how you are behaving and not put on a show for your child i think the child automatically learns how to be natural in fact i saw your ad and i know that one of the the, the themes there was really you know make sure that you talk to your child about your failures as well so that the the child can then feel safe uh, in communicating um, about that and i thought that was really relevant Papa, I don't know how to face you. मेरे एग्जाम्स बिल्कुल अच्छे नहीं गए 
I'm sorry, Papa. Appu, I know तुम चुप क्यों हो। हमें लगा सिर्फ तुम्हारा फ्यूचर सिक्योर करना काफी होगा, पर तुम्हें मुश्किलों का सामना करना हमें सिखाना चाहिए था, बेटा। Appu, see that? मेरी पहली कंपनी यही थी। मेहनत करने पर भी बंद करनी पड़ी। मुश्किलें सभी की लाइफ में आती हैं। इम्पोर्टेंट है बाउंस बैक करना। पापा अपनों का कल इंश्योर करने के साथ उन्हें बाउंस बैक करने के काबिल भी बनाएं। HDFC लाइफ सर उठा के जियो। Now, Pankaj, HDFC Life has, of course, launched a groundbreaking ad that really hones in on this theme of bouncing back to success. You know, tell us more about the underlying sort of thought process driving this advertisement. The underlying thought process is actually an insight that we see all around us that our society values success. And sometimes, whatever definition of success is being used, if anything is not in line with that, it is viewed as a failure. So our view through this ad is to communicate that your child can bounce back in spite of the setbacks that he might have had. And in that process, we have to support the child, not having just one view of what success means. Right. That's the idea. The fact that when you're talking about the mindset of the child, or you're talking about really a holistically well child, you're talking about five aspects. You're talking about the mindset, which is a showcase of how you are as well. You're talking about the sort of physical well-being, which is again a showcase of who you are. Are you actually fit? Are you going out there and working out? Are you bringing your child into that fold? If the child is not physically active, he cannot be mentally agile. Uh, nutrition is something you also have in schools now. Nutrition is something that's very important in the homes. And I bring this up because it's equally important. If one pillar falls and collapses, the other ones do as well. Recovery, are you giving that child time to do nothing? Are you, are you preparing the child to fill his time in, in, in doing extracurriculars and not giving them time to just be? Because if you are doing that, the child does not have an essence of who they are because they have no time to reflect. Are you showing your child that you are a reflective person, you're going out in your day, you're doing your things, and then you come back and really introspect? Does the child see this? And the fifth one, which is exactly what you work on, is your financial well-being. If you do not have the financial well-being or you're stressed about finances, that stress that you have is going to come across to the child. That child is going to feel like it's his obligation to do well because otherwise he fails everybody else. It is a huge burden for the child. The child doesn't get to be, he doesn't get to explore because he feels obligated and you're not doing this purposely parents are not doing this purposely but we're all human and that's the whole essence be human in your parenting then you will create a human that is also expressive and wants to give back to society i think you know that's really important i think that's really well put and uh, what i would add to that is that i believe that many of the parents now have started on that journey of being more open-minded and being being more accepting of their children my only thought here would be that India is a very large country. Right. Are we having enough of such role models of parents and such teachers, such schools and such mental health experts all over the country so that children by and large across the length and breadth of the country should also get that uh, support of such enlightened parenting. Now by way of closing comments and I pose this question to the entire panel, single piece of advice when it comes to empowering kids to bounce back to success. Being a teacher myself, I think the teacher and the parent plays a very, very important role in the life of a student. And uh, one thing that I would advise both teachers and parents to do is to have a very close bond with the child, connect with the child on things which are beyond uh, studies, okay, and beyond uh, extracurricular activities. Sure and just bond with them and give them the comfort zone when they can come and approach to you when they have any kind of difficulty so that you know where your child is coming from and you can provide the right kind of support system. So it's important for you to know that your child is feeling uncomfortable with a certain environment or with a certain setback so that you can give the cushioning that the child requires. Oh, Dr. Lulla. So my one clear message to the parents and the school is that make sure that you love your children 
and spend time with the children. I think these are two things that, whether it's the school or whether it's home, it's important to devote that time. And the most important uh, word that I want to use is have empathy towards the kids. Dr. Podar. I think that it's really important for one to recognize that technology is growing exponentially and uh, the children, they're going to be utilizing different skills that they have in order to be able to explore the world because whatever they're going to be creating is going to be on a new paradigm, which we do not have access to yet. So it's really important to let them fail, to let them struggle, to, to let them challenge themselves because that really is going to make the entrepreneur of tomorrow. Pankaj. My message to parents would be that there are many paths to success. Parents should not have just one view of what success means for them or for their children. Be always very open, accepting, supportive of their children so that whatever they are best capable of realizing, they're able to do that. Well, that brings our special feature, HTFC Life Presents Bounce Back to Success, partnered by Times Network to a close. Thanks for watching. <laughs>